Welcome everyone, this is Kojin's channel. Now we are back to our new episode of two Semerality chapters and comparison featured by Wild Lack of Legends versus the Mobile Legend by Rank. But before that, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell button so you will be notified to our new next episode. Let's do this! Kogma is a hybrid ranged DPS champion. He has very strong long range spells and a few great attack abilities aimed specifically at destroying enemy tanks. His first ability is Caustic Spittle, giving him armor penetration and activates to deal damage to a single target while also doubling that penetration. Second comes Bio Arcane Barrage, which modifies Kogma's attack to significantly increase his range and deal bonus damage based on the enemy's maximum health. Kogma may also cast Void Ooze, which is a long range damage ability, leaving a trail of ooze that slows enemies who stand on it. His ultimate is Living Artillery, which is an extremely long-range mortar-type attack. It has a low cooldown, but the mana cost increases very quickly if you cast the spell again within 6 seconds. Think of it like Cassidy's Rift Walk. Lastly, this passive, Akathian Surprise, turns you into a living bomb after you die. You retain control for a few seconds, and then blow up for some pretty significant damage. My runes are set up as a caster. Magic Penetration, Mana Regeneration per level, Cooldown Reduction, and Health. My Masteries follow a standard 9021 build, making sure to take Improved Exhaust and Improved Ghost. Kogma is extremely item dependent. Thankfully, he's also a very competent farmer. Starting at level 6, you want to employ a combination of Void Ooze and Living Artillery. Hit the ranged minions with your ultimate as soon as you can. Then, once you've waited 6 seconds, Hit the same wave again, adding in Void Ooze this time. Thanks to your runes, masteries, and Childs of Harmony, the mana cost should be no problem. You can also easily farm nearby monster camps. All but the hardiest of wraiths will fall to the same combo, and with a little extra effort, will result in a lot of bonus gold. Remember to cast the ultimate first, so that the wraiths don't evade the area of effect. Scion and I head top to gank. Always be sure to come in behind your tank and allow your teammates' crowd control spells to land easy artillery shots. As Kale turns invulnerable, remember you can always slow targets with Void Ooze, even if you can't kill them. Kogma also has the benefit of having two skill shots that hit invisible champions. While I miss Akali with my first few spells, Living Artillery is extremely potent at chopping her down in the smoke bomb. I believe Kogma should be played as a hybrid for a couple of reasons. His cooldowns are a little bit too long to be played as a more standard caster like Annie. Also, his range is so short on his basic attacks that I feel very unsafe as a standard physical DPS. But if you play him as a hybrid, you get a lot of attack speed from Ginty's Rage Blade and Master's Tooth, which makes Bio Arcane Barrage extremely potent, while cooldown reduction and ability power make Living Artillery extremely deadly. Living Artillery is one of Kog'Maw's most interesting abilities. Because it has such a long range, and because it reveals the area it targets, you should always try to scout or harass jungling enemies. As part of this video, I wanted to show you some safe scouting locations on Summoner's Rift. Note that a very tiny area in the center is revealed right when you cast the spell, and then once the artillery lands, everything struck is revealed for a few seconds. From either team in mid, a quick scroll to the right lets you spot Purple Team's Dawn. Next, Purple Team's Lizard. This should be a pretty safe location to shoot from. Down from there, you can hide in the brush to shoot blue team's column. Right at the connection to the river, blue's lizard is an easy shot. The dragon on Summoner's Rift is an extremely important objective. Shooting here with blue team will wake up and reveal the dragon. Alternatively, or as purple team, this brush provides some cover to scout dragon as well. Finally, there are a few key locations for scouting Baron Nasher. Scouting him properly is extremely important. 
Aaron Nasher is immune to debuffs, so you can only reveal him with a tiny reveal at the beginning of the spell. Here's a safe location for purple team, or generally for mid. Another approach is the extremely safe brush above him. Again, you must hit him exactly or you won't learn any information at all. Finally, we have a somewhat unsafe but convenient brush in front of Baron, in case you and your team are rushing forward and aren't sure about his status. Here's a mistake no one should ever make, especially Todbok because he has no escape mechanism. I've pushed all the way down mid to the second turret without a single enemy champion accounted for. If you're ever out of position, Voidus can be your friend and maybe save you by slowing enemies. But generally, you should realize that positioning is your best friend. One of Kog'Maw's greatest strengths is in his synergy between Void Ooze and Living Artillery. Here, I know that I can keep Akali pinned to one location and kill him. Using Bio Arcane Barrage and Living Artillery, I can also make sure it work with Dragus. Again, I'm sure to stay far behind my tanks and use range to my advantage. I chase Janna and Dragus out of mid. However, due to the extremely long range of Living Artillery, Janna's not safe yet. I force her to turn around with one shot, but she realizes she can't win a fight against me and tries to leave. Void Ooze, Living Artillery, and Bio Arcane Barrage break through her shield and over 900 health. Afterwards, the Gragas gets clumsy and succumbs to Caustic Spittle. Normally, I don't use the ability much because I love abusing Kog'Maw's long range, but in this case, I clearly have no choice. Once again, I want to show the virtues of Living Artillery. Because of its short 1 second delay and extreme range, your opponents will often have to juke the shot before they even see it. High damage, long range, but low mobility and low defense. Feels like Ryde kind of forgot how AD carries are meant to be designed, what with Kai'Sa and Aphelios being able to do 90 different things and needing to get nerfed like 10 times each. That isn't an exaggeration by the way, I think Aphelios is about to have his 8th nerf or something like that. Anyway, that little jab aside, Kogma has always been that ADC that people only bring out if and when they have a dual partner who plays Lulu or some other enchanted support, but for the most part, you rarely see anyone actively playing Kogma as an AD carry. Maybe there might be an edge case where you find a Kog going mid full AP, but that's even rarer. There's only one time I think in the past three years where he was put up in the front as one of the best AD carries in the game, but that was from, I think, the Ardent Sensor meta, not so much him being strong. It's just that he's the champion best suited for Ardent Sensor when it was hilariously overpowered. So why is Kogma the least played ADC of all time? I spent some time digging into his profile and history to see if I could pinpoint an issue, and from what I can tell, this is less about his actual design and more about his belonging in the game, or rather, how he doesn't belong in the game. At least not the way it is right now. Kogma was definitely one of the earlier champions to come into the game. In fact, prior to him, the other 80 carries were Ezreal, Corky, Twitch, Tristana, Silver, and Ash. That's it, just those six. And if you were to compare him to any of them, Kogma definitely stands out as the most damage-oriented and least mobile. Normally I would cover a champion's kick towards the midway point of the video, but with Kog, I want to cover them right now since I think it's important. Let's start with this passive, the Captain's of Price. It turns Kogma into a living time bomb upon death, and explodes to deal massive true damage in an area. The point of this was to act as a deterrent for enemy champions to engage on him because if they don't have the right means of getting in and out of Kogma's range quickly, they're going to be eating a heavy punish. Simply put, this is the if I go down, I'm taking you down with me passive, and I think it's really unique considering the only other champion to have a passive like this was Zyra, but she got reworked to no longer have it, making Kog the only one to have a suicide attack passive. Karthus doesn't really count since he's more of an active participant even while dead, as in like, he's a fully functional champion even for a short period of time. Caustic Spittle gives him free attack speed, it's always nice, and the active shoots a block of goo that damages and reduces both armor and magic resistance. It's an ability like this that gives us an indication that he prioritizes death by a thousand cuts and not hard hitting shots like Jin or Caitlyn, so this is perfect for him. The reason why shredding armor and magic resist is more suited for someone like Kogma, even though damage reduction in this game is a percent amount and not flat, is because Kogma prioritizes several hits so he can get a lot more shots in a shorter amount of time than the likes of other AD carries. Bio Arcane Barrage gives him a huge boost in attack range and also the ability to deal max health damage per hit, which further solidifies his role as an on-hit attacker. With his W and Q alone, you can tell that he's not exactly a crit build AD carry like Caitlyn nor a spell user like Ezreal. 
This, in fact, actually makes him the only pure on-hit ADC in the game. And before you mention champions like Kasa and Vayne who do build on-hit items like Winters, they mostly build it for the sake of proccing their passive as much as humanly possible, not so much for the sake of each individual shot doing a lot of damage. You rarely see them building any other on-hit items besides Winters' Rage Blade and maybe Blade of the Ruin King. Voidus, it shoots out a large area of slime, or rather he vomits it out, and it creates a large slowing field in front of it. Just by looking at this ability, you can tell it's meant for one of two purposes. To keep enemies locked in place for Kogma to free fire, or to use his cover fire to slow down pursuers. Since he's next to no mobility in his kit, this is a very much needed addition, and it also fits his theme of being this really grotesque looking bug that likes to throw out the line. Lastly, Living Artillery, his ultimate, a long range snipe tool to finish the job on anyone who was lucky enough to survive with a sliver of health left. Perfect choice for ultimate in my opinion since it forces enemy champions to consider a second range of threat outside of his auto attack range. And because Kogma has no mobility built into his kit, it's a great fit for sniping down anyone who barely just got away. Kogma is probably the first champion I talk about in this series whose lack of play rate doesn't directly stem from his designer kit, rather internal and external factors surrounding the game as a whole, not necessarily from him. See, he's basically an AD carry taken to the absolute extreme, right? If caught out in a bad situation, there's very little he can do to put up a decent fight against the likes of a Rengar, Camille, Renek, and LeBlanc. Conversely, if he has even 5 seconds to fire at will, he can single-handedly win a team fight for your team. He takes the strengths and weaknesses of an AD carry and hyperbolizes them both ways. Extremely high risk, but extremely high reward. In concept. He has a perfectly normal kit, and a well-organized one from my perspective. Every ability he has complements each other, building off of each other and trying to cover each other's shortcomings as best they can. 